What's going on everybody? Klepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be giving you some beginner tips and tricks for the blue F92 E5G to help you get more comfortable using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where we'll be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. Now this is a real easy thing to do. All you have to do is go to your settings, which the easiest way to do this is by dragging down this panel, just like that. And the settings icon from here is right here. From this menu, go to display. Then from here, go to where it says wallpaper. Then from here, go to photos. Then from here, you can use anything you might have on your Google photos or pre-installed pictures that are already on the phone. The next thing I'm going to show you is a quick way to customize your home screen and interestingly enough you can also change your wallpaper from this too. So when you get a new phone and you're setting it up for the first time, you probably are going to want to personalize the home screen a little bit, add apps and stuff like that. So when you're doing all this, one real quick and convenient way to get to your home screen settings is simply by pressing and holding your finger on any blank spot. So like this. And this menu is going to show up. From here, you can add and remove widgets change the effects, and again, change your wallpaper, and access some other home screen settings. So definitely a great shortcut to have. And in case you missed it, I'm going to show you one more time. So again, press and hold your finger on any blank spot on your home screen, and make sure it is a blank spot. If you do an app, it's going to do this, which is not exactly what you want. So again, a blank spot. So like this. And there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to customize your navigation bar. Now by default, the navigation bar on this phone is pretty standard. Three buttons, nothing really out of the ordinary. But like most phones, you can customize it a bit. To do this, what you're going to do is go to settings. Then from here, go to navigation bar. And as you can see, we have a few different options. First of all, you can hide the navigation bar. So if you want it to look a little bit more clean and minimalistic, you can go like this. And now if you press this little button right here, the navigation bar is going to disappear and don't worry, when you need it, you can easily get it back by swiping up like this. Here it is. And when you're done with it again, you can collapse it again. So definitely a nice feature. You can also change the button order. So by default, the back button is going to be on the left and recent apps is on the right, but you can switch these around. So pretty nice. You can change the color. And then finally, you can use what's called gesture navigation. Now, in case you don't know what it is, when you go to gesture navigation, Instead of three buttons, the navigation bar is just going to be this one line instead. This is going to make things look a little bit more minimalistic and honestly, since you can hide the navigation bar anyway, I feel like aesthetic wise, it's not quite as necessary. But aside from just how it looks, I know some people do like the functionality a bit better. Now in case you've never used it before, gesture navigation is actually really simple. To go to your home screen, swipe up like this. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger partially up. And to go back, swipe from the side. So yeah, gesture navigation is a great option to have. So if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving it a try. Now I'm going to show you how to get to your power menu. Now, last year at this time, with pretty much any Android phone, it would all be the same kind of thing. All you would have to do is press and hold the power key, which is why we call it a power key. But nowadays, we're starting to see this new feature where if you press and hold the power key, instead of going to the power menu, it's going to open the assistant instead. So I don't know a single person who actually wants to use it like that, especially when on any Android phone I've ever used, you can already get to the assistant by pressing and holding your home button. So I don't know why we need another shortcut for it. Doesn't make any sense to me. But just keep in mind, if you do want to get to your power menu, there are several ways to do it. The first way, if you want to use a button, is pressing the power key and the volume up key at the same time. So like this. And there we go. And keep in mind, you don't have to hold the buttons. Just press them real quick. So like that. And there we go. So pretty simple, not quite as intuitive as pressing and holding the power key, but I guess it does work. You can also drag down this top bar, just like we do when we go to the settings menu. And the power icon right here is also going to lead to the power menu. And then finally, if you just want it to go back to normal and you don't want to use this weird press and hold assistant shortcut, then what you can do is go to settings. From here, go to intelligent assistance. Then from here, go all the way to the bottom where it says press and hold power button. And now, as you can see, by default, hold for assistant is on. But if you toggle it off, now if you press and hold the power key, it's going to open the power menu instead. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to use dark mode. Now, there are two different ways to do this. The normal way is by going to settings. From here, go to display. And dark mode is right up here at the top. Pretty simple. So if we go to dark mode, as you can see, we are now in dark mode. You can also have it scheduled. So if we do automatic, go here. You can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or a custom time. Now, in addition to this, if you just want to toggle it on and off quickly and you don't want to mess around with the settings menu every time, what you can also do is swipe down from the top twice. So one, 
to the same spot where the settings and power button are. And now by default in this little menu, as you can see, there are a bunch of shortcuts to a bunch of different features. Dark mode is not in here, but if you want, you can add it by clicking this button right here. Then from here, scroll down below this line, you're going to see everything you can add. So dark mode is right here to add it onto your menu, press and hold, drag it to the other side. Then from here, go back. And as you can see, dark theme is now in the menu. So now no matter what you're doing on your phone to turn dark mode on or off, all you have to do is swipe down twice and it is going to be in this menu. Now I'm going to show you how to control which apps can send you notifications. To do this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to notifications. Then from here, go to app settings. By default, it's going to show you the most recent ones. So if an app sent you a notification like two hours ago, it's going to show up right here at the top. But if you want, you can hit this drop down, go to all apps. It's going to show you everything. You can also see most frequent and the ones you have turned off. Now, if you want to turn one off, all you have to do is toggle it off right here. And that's pretty much it. Keep in mind, there are some things like this, for example, that can't be turned off, but I don't think I've ever gotten a notification from that anyway. So most likely you're not going to have to worry about them. In general, in my experience, any apps that are going to flood your phone with notifications, you can turn them off here. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen time out time so your phone doesn't fall asleep on you when you're trying to read or something like that. To do this, as always, we're going to go to settings. From here, go to display. Then from here, go to screen time out time. So right here, as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes really just for these videos. I feel like most people are probably not going to need it this long, but if you do, of course you always can. And of course you can also set it as short as 15 seconds. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to take a screenshot with the blue F92 E 5G. Now this is a really easy thing to do. All you have to do is press the power key in the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind with some phones, you have to hold the buttons, but with this one, you don't just press them real quick. So like this. And that's pretty much it. This toolbar is going to show up or whatever you want to call it. You can edit, share, and essentially that's pretty much the basic way to do it. That being said, when it comes to screenshots, there are a couple other things you can do. So first of all, you can do what's called a super screenshot, which is basically a screenshot with a bunch of different features. So as you can see, you can edit it, whatever you want to do. I think I did that pretty fast. So I'm going to show you one more time. So for the super screenshot, all you have to do is swipe down twice. So again, this is that same menu we keep going back to. Super screenshot is right here. Tap on this icon. And this is pretty much it. You can move it around. This is basically a normal screenshot. You can kind of cut it up and you can also take a screen recording from here. In addition to this, there is another shortcut for screenshots, but it's not on by default. To turn it on, what you're going to have to do is go to settings. From here, go to intelligent assistance. So right here. And as you can see, three finger screenshot is right here. Toggle it on. With this feature on, to take a screenshot, all you have to do is put three fingers on your screen, swipe down like this, and that's pretty much it. And then finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is how to change your screen lock. Now, by default, the screen lock is going to be a pin, which you should have got when you first set up this phone. And I personally have the fingerprint scanner on too, but we do have a few other options. To get to these, go to settings. From here, go to security. So right here. Then from here, under device security, go to biometrics and password. So we have a few different sections here. First one is the fingerprint scanner. So if we go here, enter your current pin, as you can see, you can add and delete fingerprints. And then if we go back, you can also turn on face ID. So same thing, enter your pin and the setup is pretty simple. And then finally, you can change your screen lock. So if you go here, enter your pin one more time. And as you can see, you can choose between none, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. Now keep in mind, none and swipe are pretty much nothing. The only real difference is that with swipe, there is sort of a lock screen, I guess, but it's not really secure or anything. Pattern is pretty cool. It's kind of a classic for Androids. Pin is pretty much the standard. And then if you want really high security, you can always use a password instead. But this concludes my beginner's guide to the blue F92 E 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description where I will be linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.